All right, the insanity continues. I told you I was putting a PLC in, and this is going to be its home. Finally got a hold of a cabinet, and it's a bit of a beast, as you can see by these strong men struggling to get in the basement. But I think this will work pretty well for what I'm doing. Obviously, it's used, but uh, if this cabinet was new, it'd probably be $10,000, especially since it's stainless steel. I didn't go out looking for a stainless cabinet, but this is what came up, and I think it's a pretty good size, so I got really lucky. As you can see, there was something in here. Someone has already gutted it. That was not me. And uh, she's a little dirty, but we'll clean it up. Whatever was in here must have been pretty substantial because those are some serious studs on this back plate. But the most important thing for me with this cabinet was not only its size, but the fact that it barely has any knockouts, which is kind of a miracle. It has none in the top, it has none in the sides. It's got a little one on the front and a couple in the bottom, but that's definitely a win. As most people know, you find these used cabinets, they're usually completely full of holes. So for a couple hundred bucks, you definitely can't beat it. I mean, the stainless is probably worth more than that. And you'll need a 150 amp breaker? I don't know if it's good, but you can find out. Investigating further, it looks like we got some fuses. Got an old timer relay or timer contactor. And it must be old because the relays are mounted directly to the back plate with flatheads. And we all know how much the old timers loved flatheads for some psychotic reason. It is a Hoffman enclosure, so definitely a name brand, not bad. Not bad, not bad. And it, oh, it does have a diagram, so I guess that'll tell us what it is. An old auto transformer, size four. That explains the big studs. There was a big ass transformer in here. If you don't know what that is, it's just like an old school soft start. It starts the motor, I think at 30% voltage, and then it switches over to full voltage. I can't really remember. Definitely old school stuff. But I can see why they gutted out the transformer, because that was probably a pretty good chunk of copper. So this thing's 6 feet tall and 12 inches deep. So yeah, this is definitely the enclosure she told you not to worry about. And finally, we got about a 38-inch width, or at least I'm going to round up, like I always do. And my plan is to go put it behind where the light bulbs are, which a lot of people were fascinated by in the last video. If anyone was wondering, I built that thing to take to an elementary school for a career day. So if you thought it was cool, well, so did the preschoolers. Now that the enclosure is on smooth concrete, I plan to move it with this floor jack, but obviously these two little pipes are in the way, so I'm going to have to work on getting them out first. I'm sure they'll come right out. Spoiler alert, they did not come right out, which I didn't think they would, so I broke out the grinder and just cut the lock nuts off. But anyway, we got them out, so now we can move this beast. But first we gotta make room. And through the magic of editing, it's done! So, we need 37 and a half, or 37 and 3 eighths inches. I want to leave this little room next to my ATS because I might add some more power stuff in the future. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? So our new cabinet will begin at the end of the existing strut. And as you can see, it comes over into the insulation. So now it's time for me to trigger everyone and take this insulation down. You can save your comments because I know that I should keep the insulation on the walls and it has a lot of good properties, but the fact is, I just don't like the look of it. There used to be insulation behind all the electric panels too, but I tore all that off the wall as well. And unfortunately they use those ram set nails, so you have to cut everything off of the grinder. So yeah, it is what it is. I know you're still going to comment on it, so whatever. Anyway, let's get this jack underneath here. I got this hefty aluminum plate so I don't crush the bottom of this cabinet because the weight of the cabinet will definitely buckle the bottom. And uh, just lift it up, if you want. If anyone's wondering why this weird dude in mom jeans who skipped leg day is doing all this work, give me a break. It's the weekend. I can wear what I want. And no, I'm not wearing boots, so get over it. Now we can warble this thing over into place, and I highly recommend pushing the jack with your cock. I don't know why, but it just seems to work, so don't question it, just do it. Do it! Set her down nice and gently, and then wiggle her into place. So even though this is stainless steel and could probably go right up against the concrete, I am still going to leave a little gap behind it, just in case I want to run something behind it, or if I want to see behind there. And then I'll put a piece of strut on top that these holes will bolt into, and as you can see, everything else on the electric service is spaced off the wall anyway, so I'm just going to kind of keep that trend. 
All right, now that it's roughly in place, we're gonna go ahead and cut a piece of strut for the top, make it just a little bit bigger than the cabinet itself. Always go to the nearest full inch mark, don't be a weirdo. And then we'll break out one of my best purchases ever, which is this M12 bandsaw. I bit the bullet and bought this thing right before I started building the house, and it was one of the best things I ever did. I mean, I use it for everything. If you've got some crackers and a hard cheddar and don't know what to do, don't worry, I'll cut it for you. And I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee, even though I would love to be. Here I marked the center of the cabinet and the center of the strut so that they will be centered with each other. And then I'm marking where I'm gonna drill the holes for the anchors. Unfortunately, the concrete kind of slopes up near the wall so the cabinet doesn't sit flat right off the bat, but we're gonna compensate for that. Here I am marking the bottom holes. They will also get anchors. I'm gonna anchor this thing all the way down, even though just the top or just the bottom would probably be fine. And then we're gonna scooter on out of here and work on getting some holes drilled. I'm gonna use these 3 8 stainless steel stud anchors or wedge anchors. I'm not really sure what they're called. I always call them stud anchors. And I'm gonna mark my bit so I don't go too deep because the floor supposedly is only about four inches thick. So I don't really wanna punch all the way through. And then just uh, drill some holes. Stop being a wuss. Oh, he's sweeping all the dust into the holes. Then the anchors won't go in all the way. Shut up! You know what I'm doing? Kind of. Sometimes. Not really, but I did at least blow them out. And then we'll just go ahead and hammer these babies home. And I can already see the comments. Oh, you should put a nut on there before you hammer them in. I'm not really about that, because the tops of these stud anchors are tapered. So unless you're beating the absolute hell out of them, you should be fine. And if you put a nut on first and you beat on the nut, you're going to mess up the threads. And if you mess up the threads and then back the nut off, it's stainless. It's going to get messed up. So just don't suck and don't mess them up. Anyway, we got the ones in the floor and we got the ones in the wall. So should be good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the strut ready. And since it's not stainless steel, I always put this little barrier on. And uh, if you're wondering what this is, I think it's actually roofing tar tape. It's probably not meant for this. I think it works just fine. Time will tell. I mostly just do it for the satisfaction of peeling the back off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We'll go ahead and pop a few holes in there so the anchors can go through. If you don't do this, it kind of becomes a pain in the ass. It will poke through, but it takes a lot of rubber with it. And then just uh, put it on the wall. But don't forget your anti-seize because we're going stainless to stainless with the nut and anchor. So uh, we all know how that goes, or at least you should. Or maybe you don't. Stainless on stainless can gall up very easily and then it will never come apart. So it's good to use anti-seize. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the back of the cabinet because pretty soon that will no longer be accessible. I don't care about this being perfect because no one's gonna see it, but I at least wanna give it a quick clean so I can sleep at night. This thing is pretty filthy, so. Definitely going to take some cleaning. Most of this video is going to be cleaning, so I don't blame you if you don't want to watch it. Anyway, now we can slide this thing in once again, pushing the jack with our penis, because that is the way. And then we had the jacket up high enough to get it over top of the studs. Now, this part's not very easy. You got to get all the holes to line up. And if you didn't drill them in the right place, you are absolutely screwed. But I got lucky and got them all lined up. So it's a Christmas miracle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the top mounted. I got my spring nuts, which are clearly invented by the devil because they will make you wanna kill somebody. Go ahead and get her all level, get the spring nuts in, you know the deal. Just uh, bolt it to the wall. And if you're like me and you struggle with spring nuts cause you're dumb, sometimes it helps to cut the spring off. So there's another tip. We got the thing bolted up. Looks like we're almost level. We're not perfect, but um, I'm not perfect, so. I guess it's good. Yeah, she's leaning a tiny bit, but I think it'll be fine. In my opinion, there's two main things to consider when you're leveling a cabinet. One, does it look like shit? And two, does the door swing open or closed by itself? Because if the door swings closed by itself or open by itself, it will infuriate you in the future. And it might hurt you because sometimes there's 120 on the door and it'll just swing closed and hit you. As you can see, we got our nuts on, we got our anti-seize, but we did have to lean the cabinet back to get it level, so we do have a little gap there. I didn't have any shims at the moment, but once I do, I'll put them in there and tighten those bolts down. 
And as you can see, it was absolutely filthy under there too, but I cleaned it all up. Now that it's securely mounted, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the outside. If you're wondering why I did all this work and didn't even clean it yet, it's because it's easier to clean it when it's not moving and it's not trying to fall on you. So that's why I bolted everything down before I cleaned it because I don't have to worry about it crushing me to death. But anyway, I wanna get a three point latch for this thing if possible. I don't know if I can retrofit one on, but the three point latch would be nice. That's the one that just has the single handle and three points of contact on the back. So if I can find one that fits, I will put it in. Now we can move on to the inside, which is also absolutely filthy. So first things first, we'll go ahead and get the rest of the components off the back plate, and then we'll get this thing cleaned up. While I'm doing that, I wanted to address a couple things. If anyone's watching this at home and thinking, I'm gonna do that in my basement. For one, you're insane, but I appreciate your insanity. And two, don't use this as an example. I am not technically qualified to do any of this. Some people in the comments seem to think I am an engineer. I am not an engineer. I am just a stupid electrician. I have said it many times. So yeah, don't follow what I'm doing because uh, I'm not gonna be responsible if you burn your house down. And I know there's a lot of other people who do home automation who are like, why the hell are you doing it like this? Why don't you just get, you know, a Leviton system or this system or that system or use a Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant and these relay modules. I get it. There's a million ways to do this. This is just how I want to do it because this is what I know and I enjoy doing it and I think it looks cool. So uh, yeah, I'm aware there are many, many other ways to do this. There are better ways to do this, cheaper ways to do this, but this is what I'm doing. So like it or not, it's happening. That being said, I am very interested in using Home Assistant for this when I finally get the wiring done. I don't know if I'll be able to make it communicate with my PLC, but um, I'm sure there's a lot of good channels out there on Home Assistant because it's very popular. So if you know a good channel on Home Assistant on YouTube, let me know in the comments. I will watch it and try to learn. I thought about putting an HMI on the front of this cabinet, but I'm hoping to kind of use Home Assistant as an HMI, maybe just use a tablet on the front or something like that. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing or what I'm going to end up doing, but I know it's going to go in this cabinet. As you can see, I am removing the back plate, and if you're not familiar with electrical cabinets or control cabinets, they usually have a back plate. Some people call it the panel, but it's much easier to build your system with the back plate removed and in a good spot where you can actually get to everything. I have built them in place before, but it's usually a pain in the butt. I'd rather just have it on some sawhorses or something and get everything built and put the back plate back in. That's how they do it in the real world anyway. Of course, speaking of the real world, the guys who actually do this professionally have these nice stands that hold the back plate in a perfect spot to work on it. I don't have that. We're just going to improvise and do what we can. Now I'll go ahead and remove the rest of the components off the door. Like I said, I got really lucky because there's only one hole in this door, and that's for this old reset button. I'm also probably not going to keep the paper holder, or if I do, I'll get a new one because I don't think I really need it. Now that that's halfway cleaned up, we'll go ahead and get our back plate on some sawhorses, like I said earlier and we'll start getting the rest of that stuff removed. Those big ass studs were tight as hell, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, tight, 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 yeah! I guess they didn't want that auto transformer vibrating itself off and falling into the bottom of the cabinet and blowing up. Understandable. I am really glad I get to repurpose this cabinet because as nice as it would be to have a brand new one, for one, it's a giant waste of money, even though I'm all about wasting money, and it's a shame that this thing was going in the dumpster, or was in the dumpster. It's just, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it. At the end of the day, it's a big steel box, and I'm sure it will contain whatever arc is created inside it, especially since the highest voltage that will be inside this box will be 120. So I'm sure it will be safe, at least safe enough for my standards. But it'll be good to give this thing a new life. I'm sure I will massively regret it being stainless steel because every time I put a conduit into it, drilling the hole is going to be a giant pain in the ass, even with carbide cutters, but um, at least it'll look cool. Here's the specialized tool I'm using for stickers. I also brought out my inner mechanic and tried brake clean, but there's certain stuff I'm probably not going to get off, but it's really not a big deal because if you've ever built a panel before, you know you don't end up really seeing much of the back plate. Most of it's covered by panduit and wires and components, so... I could give it a coat of spray paint, but that seems wrong since it's already powder coated. I don't really want to spray paint over powder coating, so I think it's just going to have to be good enough. So there we go. I'm sorry if this video was boring. There's only so much you can talk about when it comes to a big metal box. I do want to clean it up a little better, get those stickers off. I'll try a couple more methods on that. 
And on the inside, we have more stickers. Stickers are definitely going to be the bane of my existence with this cabinet. I almost want to leave the old auto transformer diagram because it's kind of cool, but I probably won't. Need to get the rust off around these knockouts. I also need to fill those knockouts and my shims for the bottom. But a lot of this stuff, I'm probably not going to show you because it's boring. In terms of the back plate, got it pretty well cleaned up. Probably try to do a little better. If anyone was wondering about the bottom or the back of the back plate, it's actually in really good shape. It's actually in better shape than the top, if anyone actually cares. Um, there's a little sneak peek of our components that are going to go on next episode. I will explain all that. But until then, I'll see you on the next one.